context of Sri Lanka, it's uh, a change that happens in the 1880s, 1890s and onwards. Uh, and it has uh, a long lasting repercussions. It's at that point that Buddhism becomes larger. And I, I, I mean larger quite literally uh, uh, in, in, and I mean it in three different senses. One way Buddhism became larger from that point onwards is by a uh, way of conversion or reconversion. Um, uh, in, the, in the case of Sri Lanka, which is uh, the, the most colonized country in Asia, it, it's oftentimes reconversion uh, because people who had been Buddhist in, let's say, the 13th century um, converted uh, in, in with the beginning of the colonial period. The extreme example is the, the family of SWRD Bandarnayaka, who was prime minister of Sri Lanka in the 1950s. Uh, his family harks back to a Tamil Brahmin who came to Sri Lanka before the beginning of the colonial period. And uh, at least by family accounts, the family became Buddhist. When the Portuguese came in 1505, they became Roman Catholics. When the Dutch came in the 1650s, they joined the Dutch Reformed Church. And when the British came in the 1790s, uh, they became Anglicans. Bundar Nyka went off to Oxford uh, as an Anglican and uh, remained that until the 1920s when he had a moment of uh, clarity. Uh, he was playing bridge actually at the at the Queen's Hotel in Candy uh, during the Candy Parahara, and he decided he had to be a Buddhist. So if you think about the the history of that one family, starting out with uh, uh, being a Hindu and moving on to a variety of other religions, that would be an example of uh, reconversion. And there has to be, at least among elite Sri Lankans, a number of similar stories. These are not things people talk about. This is not, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not public knowledge, but uh, in, in Bandra Nayaka's case, it had to be because uh, he was interested in, uh, in uh, a, a political career that depended upon his being a Buddhist. The second way that Buddhism became larger uh, is by way of the conversion of Westerners, which begins at roughly the same point. The first uh, Westerners become monks, uh, come in the 1890s, early 20th century. Uh, and that number is insubstantial. Uh, obviously, it, it, it grows over time, but uh, the, the numbers are not themselves uh, terribly uh, uh, changeful. I'm going to talk about the, the third way that Buddhism became larger and ignore the, the first two, which uh, I'm putting aside for the moment and talking simply about the fact that lay people become much more important in the practice of the religion fr from the 1890s onwards. And this is also the historical moment when uh, words like Buddhagama are coined for the first time. Buddhagama is the singular expression for Buddhism. It's uh, a product of, uh, of Western scholarship uh, and uh, uh, missionary uh, efforts in Sri Lanka. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a word that has been clearly unpacked because it brings with it a whole set of assumptions about Buddhism that uh, are alien to the religion and which ha which have uh, important consequences once um, once we've coined a word for Buddhism. <clears throat> There's a second word that that uh, is is far less well scrutinized and I think it's equally important. It's the word Baudea. Um, 
this too is a neologism, and it comes at roughly the same point of time. Dharmapala starts his Singhala newspaper, Singhala Baudia, in 1906. So at least by 1906, the, the word is in uh, common usage. Um, it's interesting that the, so much attention has been sh given to thinking about Buddha Dogma and its consequences. Little attention has been given to the the word Baudia in the singular, or Baudio in the plural, uh, referring to uh, people who are Buddhists. What happens at the the uh, the moment where these words become important is lay people start to uh, uh, have a role that changes in at least two two ways. One way is that uh, Buddhism becomes an exclusive commitment. You are a Buddhist to the exclusion of other religious commitments that you might have. In the early 19th century, there are missionary accounts that uh, uh, with great frustration refer to people who fill out census forms in Sri Lanka and uh, identify themselves as Buddhist Christians. People say things like the Buddha is the the the, the moon. Uh, Jesus Christ is the sun, as an expression of their uh, uh, their dual religious identities. And this was generally true of, of South Asia. Uh, in the 1910 census of India, there are over a hundred thousand people in Gujarat who identified themselves as Hindu Muslims. The very idea that a person could be a Muslim and a Hindu at the same time. That doesn't follow the logic of Western uh, Asian religions like Christianity or Islam. But that was the way people thought about themselves until there comes this point in Buddhist history. Let's say early 20th century where you were a Buddhist to the exclusion of other religions. The second uh, way that lay people uh, become enfranchised is that they 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 start to uh, identify themselves in a more self-conscious way as Buddhists. Uh, they have a responsibility to the religion. They are co-parsoners of the religion. They uh, they play a role that uh, is activist and defensive and and aggressive because uh, in the Sri Lankan case, uh, the balance of power was in the hands of Christians. Um, the, the British, of course, were Christians. Uh, uh, the Sri Lankan elite was Christian, and the Buddhists uh, had a position of inferiority despite their numerical dominance, and uh, that changes with the Buddhist revival that uh, uh, starts in the late 19th century. All of these, all of these changes uh, are have been treated by people like Richard Gombrich and Gananath Obiasekra, and um, they they've uh, understood the enfranchising of lay people in terms of. Uh, uh, the notion of Protestant Buddhism that I'll not talk about uh, particularly, and also the notion of uh, laicizing the the religion and uh, um, and uh, blurring the distinction between those who have renounced the world and those who are still part of the world. I. Uh, I don't believe that is the case. I don't believe Buddhism was laicized in the way that uh, Gombrich has talked about it. He said, for instance, that uh, for Dharmapala, uh, religion was the same thing for everybody. And uh, uh, there's, there's clear evidence that uh, 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 that that was not the case, that uh, uh, Dharmapala thought about uh, there being two 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 categories of Buddhists, there were uh, it wasn't the traditional distinction between the monks and the laity. 
It was the distinction between the monks and brahmacharya, uh, he himself being a brahmacharya on the one side and on the other side, the laity. For Dharmapala, what was key to uh, having a, uh, a serious religious commitment was celibacy. Uh, you don't practice brahmacharya in South Asia without uh, being celibate. Uh, Dharmapala was a vegetarian and uh, an ascetic in many ways, but uh, his vegetarianism was uh, uh, spotty. Um, on many occasions, he eats chicken or he eats fish or he eats mutton. Uh, uh, he, he's not, he, I, in modern terms, he'd be called a flexitarian, although he, he wasn't as flexible as a modern day flexitarian. He, by and large, was a vegetarian, but he never broke the vow of celibacy. And that was key to uh, practicing the, the Uttari Manusa Dharma, the, the higher Dharma that uh, he and uh, a, a limited number of Buddhist monks practiced. Gombert says that uh, the, the Anagarika idea, the, Dharmapala uh, ordained a, a number of men as uh, Anagarikas like himself. They never lasted very long and the whole movement uh, petered out. There's the, there's the occasional Anagarika, but usually self-ordained the same way Dharmapala was self-ordained. Self uh, but by and large, Dharma, uh, Gombrich is right that they're, they're, the, the Anagarika idea did not carry on. He says it did not carry on, uh, did not continue on because, because everybody, every, lay, every layman is an Anagarika these days. I, 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 I would argue with that. That's, that's not what's happened because... <laughs> For Dharmapala's money to be an Anagarka means you are celibate, and obviously uh, most laymen, even in Sri Lanka, are not celibate. I, I, I think once you get rid of the idea of laicizing the religion and blurring the distinction, um, it, it becomes harder to explain the rise of lay people. It, it, the idea is useful because it, it, it sort of solves the, the puzzle and I think the puzzle, puzzle is still left to be treated. So I, I want to try to talk about uh, how it happens that uh, that Dharmapala uh, comes to have a uh, a role in creating an enfranchised laity. It's not because he ever wrote very much or ever uh, published articles uh, talking about what he expected of laymen. It was, by the way, laymen. Uh, th this is uh, an entirely gendered phenomenon. The, uh, he, he is not interested in, uh, he, he has benign ideas about education for women, but uh, he understands renunciation as a, as a male prerogative, and uh, he's he's interested in uh, in practicing that himself. But he does he does not publish he doesn't publish anything in the uh, in the journal of the Mahabodhi Society about the duties of lay people. Or if he does, he he understands it in a timeless way without any regard to uh, the role that he himself is embodied uh, as a uh, as a lay person. The, the, the paradox here is that the monkhood uh, at the time looked at Dharmapala as a layman and he looked upon himself as a renouncer. He saw himself as a brahmacharya. They saw him as less than a Buddhist monk. But he 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 wasn't anti-clerical. Uh, uh, if he if he if he Gombrich and Obia Sacra both say he was anti-clerical, and he had very harsh things to say about monks. But he had very harsh things to say about everyone, including members of his own family that he publicly uh, 
took to task over their westernized ways. So uh, I would say if, if you're, if you're going to uh, argue that Dharmapala was anti-clerical, you'd have to say he was anti-clerical in the same way that Martin Luther was anti-clerical. He was not anti-clerical in the way the French Revolution took the Catholic Church uh, to task over its, uh, its failings. Um, he he doesn't he doesn't he he when he writes things that have any reference to uh, the laity in the Mahabodhi he doesn't say anything about uh, uh, about activism or identity politics or um, uh, stepping up and and uh, 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 fostering the sasana. He talks about the same kinds of obligations that dayakas, that is, lay supporters, uh, uh, w would have been meeting for centuries before, supporting the monks, uh, 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 trying to uh, endow monasteries, uh, the kind of uh, charity that is true across the Theravada world. His major publication, uh, uh, on proper lay behavior is the, uh, the, the little pamphlet he published in the early 20th century is called the Gihi Dina Charyava. Uh, it's sometimes translated as the Gihi Vinaya, but uh, the, the book is titled the Gihi Dina Charyava, daily conduct uh, for lay people. And he, he talks about uh, uh, bathroom behavior. He talks about dining. He talks about a wife uh, greeting her husband kindly when he comes home. He talks about how you should walk on the street uh, or on the the pathway. Uh, he doesn't say anything about how you embody the role of Buddhist. So uh, it, it's 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 hard to find any traces of, of what he believed that there's some material uh, there's some material uh, in his diaries that that is uh, that's helpful. It was much more forthcoming with regards to the monkhood. He had a clear vision of what he uh, he wanted monks to do, and uh, he talks about that stuff in his diaries in in, in a sporadic way, not in not in a, as a large exposition, but he makes passing comments. He is horrified that monks are appearing in public with lay people. Uh, he's horrified that monks want to vote in elections. He's horrified that monks are becoming political. So in spite of the fact that uh, if you believe H.L. Senevaratna, there are Dharmapalite monks being educated at Vidyodhya, and Vidyalankara uh, Pirivenas at the time, Dharmapala had no, 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 no sympathy for monks becoming more politically active. He, uh, he, wanted, he, he had a role in mind. He wanted monks to do uh, the traditional things. Uh, <laughs> uh, he wanted them to study uh, uh, the Dhamma. He, he wanted them to practice uh, meditation and the number of monks in Sri Lanka uh, in the early 20th century who did meditation could be counted on the fingers of one hand, I suspect. That, so in, in a sense, he wanted an, uh, a new uh, undertaking for monks, although he understood it as uh, one that goes back to the time of the Buddha and was uh, at least honored in the breach by all monks. And he wanted monks to take on the role of Dharmadutta, of uh, someone who would carry carry the the teachings abroad and foster them in uh, Europe or India or, or the United States. I'm at a loss then to uh, uh, know exactly what he had in mind for lay people and. Uh, uh, despite the fact that I, I want to try to think through uh, 
uh, his relationship to the emergence of uh, an engaged laity, uh, he doesn't give much in the way of, uh, of, um, of guidance as to what he had in mind. I, I'll say just, just uh, a, a couple of things, because at this point I've, I've, I've reached the, the area of darkness and uh, uh, I'm, I'm simply proceeding tentatively from this point onwards. It's clear that Buddhists borrowed many things from Christians uh, at this point in Dharmapala's life. Uh, the first example I can come up with is um, in the in the the life of Migatuwate Gunananda, who was the, the the famous Buddhist monk in Sri Lanka, who engaged in the the several debates that Buddhist monks had with Christians in the late 19th century. In 1862, uh, Migatuwate um, uh, established the Society for the Propagation of the Dhamma. And obviously the Society for the Propagation of the Dhamma was modeled upon the uh, Church of England and the Society for the Propagation of the Gospel. The Society, there were two actually, uh, and the Society for the Propagation of Christian Knowledge. The, the extreme example of uh, of, of borrowing is is the the YMBA. Obviously, you know what the the precedent is for the YMBA. What what the Buddhists borrowed from the Christians were institutions and practices. Uh, Olcott was a, a great one for for borrowing uh, Christian practices like Sunday school and uh, church bazaar to raise funds. Uh, and and the YMBA would be an, an, another example of borrowing an institution. What they they didn't borrow uh, anything that I can find from the Christians in Sri Lanka, apropos of the role of a layman. Um, it, it occurred to me that since Dharmapala doesn't uh, give us any uh, evidence to speak of about what he envisioned. Maybe the way to try to unpack this is to look at uh, the, the, the role of Christian lay people as a model for the role of Buddhist lay people. There's nothing there. Um, and I, I think I, I can pretty much explain why that is. Um, the Catholic Church, which uh, was substantial then as it is now in Sri Lanka. There, there are a million uh, Roman Catholics in Sri Lanka, uh, and their being Catholics uh, dates in some cases back to the Portuguese period, and there's been a, a, a long period of conversion, uh, particularly in the late 19th century when the Catholic Church became much more aggressive about uh, 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 converting people. Uh, there's a substantial number of Catholics, but the, the, the Roman Catholicism is not laicized. Uh, the emphasis is on the, the priority of the clerics and not upon the responsibilities of lay people. So you, you might uh, now dispatch the Catholic example. And in the case of uh, the, 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 the other uh, Protestant groups, Ch Church of England, uh, the Wesleyans, uh, th they were, they never were able to put together uh, communities of any size. And as a, as a consequence, I'm not sure they ever thought through what, what the role of a, let's say, a, a Methodist lay person ought to be. So it seems to me that, that, um, uh, it's um, it's a it's a non-starter to uh, expect the Christians to have given the Buddhists any guidance. What Dharmapala did was not think through the role of uh, the, the enfranchised layperson. What he did is uh, led uh, movements, pro projects. Uh, one was uh, uh, the the temperance movement. 
that clearly was inspired by the Christians because the Christian uh, church, uh, particularly the Catholic church, uh, was interested in uh, trying to uh, promote temperance before the Buddhists got into uh, uh, the, the temperance business. Um, for Dharmapala's uh, uh, interests, temperance was for, for, for villagers. It, 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 he was not concerned about well-to-do elite Sri Lankans uh, drinking scotch. He was concerned about uh, villagers drinking Iraq and toddy and uh, falling down and uh, uh, spending their 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 income on alcohol as a as a consequence. There there are wonderful line drawings in uh, in the Salon Nation, which was uh, Dharmapala's English language publication uh, about uh, the behavior of men in an Iraq uh, tavern uh, drinking to the point of. Uh, uh, complete intoxication. He also was interested in dress reform, and that that was aimed at elite Sri Lankans and and Christians. Uh, that was an argument that uh, Buddhism is a heritage; it's a civilization, and civilized people dress in a certain way. So, on on the first count with regard to temperance, it's it's uh, the Panchasila, it's uh, Pansil. That, that, that gives guidance, the doctrine. In the second case, it's Dharmapala's notion that uh, we can better understand the way forward if we uh, dress as our ancestors dressed uh, in national dress. There was no national dress, so it had to be made up from scratch. It had to be borrowed from India. It, uh, uh, it's full of ironies and, and contradictions, but uh, that was an important way that he got lay people involved in practicing Buddhism as lay people. And, and, and finally, um, he, he led a campaign. It was actually his uh, acolyte, uh, Harish Chandra Wallasinga, who led the campaign to prevent the building of a uh, Anglican church in Anuradhapura. Wallasinga had uh, huge ambitions about uh, c clearing out the old town and um, creating a sacred city. He invented the language of the sacred city. He wanted a, a concentric circle uh, drawn around the, the sacred bow tree at Anuradhapura that would be 48 miles wide and there'd be nothing but Buddhist uh, sites within that uh, uh, 48 mile diameter. Those were three of the important projects that Dharmapala uh, 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 invented for uh, pursuing causes. And he, he didn't do it as, as a way of enfranchising lay people. He did it because he, he was anxious about intoxication. He was anxious about westernization. He was anxious about uh, the building of uh, the, the presence of uh, Anglican churches and 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 uh, Hindu temples and a mosque in Anuradhapura, close to all of the, the, the stupas and the bow tree. His, his, his projects here were not designed to enfranchise people, but they did enfranchise people. And the, the, the best uh, explanation I can come up with the best way I can uh, close out what I've been talking about uh, just now is uh, to think about uh, uh, how that had something to do with lay people thinking about themselves as Buddhists with in, in parens, thinking about themselves self-consciously as Buddhist laymen with obligations and in, entitlements uh, that... Uh, they've pursued ever ever since. Lenin, uh, it seems to me, ha has, uh, has a, a, a very skillful way of, of thinking about uh, uh, what Dharmapala is doing, not, not, not explicitly about Dharmapala, but how, how it is that you 
how uh, you enlist people or how people come to identify themselves in a way that they had not done previously. What Lenin says is if you if you want to uh, convert someone to uh, uh, communism, if you want to make them a member of the Communist Party, you don't do so by uh, talking to them about Das Kapital. You don't do so by uh, giving them a copy of the Communist Manifesto. What you do is you ask uh, someone who has the slightest inclination to uh, stand on a street corner and pass out pamphlets. Um, you you uh, ask the person to approach strangers and uh, ask whether they'd like to have a copy of something about communism. What is what is so uh, clever about that, it seems to me, is it uh, eases people into the role. Instead of asking a person who uh, might uh, have not the slightest interest in communism, uh, you, you recruit that person by making them act like a communist. And uh, when the, the pamphleteer is on the street corner and someone passes by, uh, let's say the, the person uh, has a question to ask about uh, uh, what, what the pamphlet is about, then the pamphleteer has to explain uh, and, and has to educate himself or herself about what uh, communism entails. And if the person, uh, the passerby, is hostile uh, to communism, then uh, it, it's, 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 equally, it's equally useful because at that point, the pamphleteer has to defend communism and uh, educates himself, uh, educates herself with regards to what it is that uh, constitutes uh, communist ideology. I would say the same thing is true of Dharmapala. He, he, uh, he creates an enfranchised laity by showing people causes, and um, the, 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 the upshot is that he, he, leaves the, he, he leaves the scene with a whole set of lay people who clearly identify themselves as Buddhists and uh, regard themselves as having privileges, entitlements, and responsibilities as lay people in a way that had not been the case before when Dayakas saw, saw themselves as uh, of second order importance and useful only to the extent that they could uh, materially support monks and uh, endow monasteries. Let me stop at that point. I've I've used my time up, and I'll be happy to hear questions, and and I'm sure I can learn from them. Hi. If anybody has any questions, they can raise their hand using the function, which is a ribbon on the top of their screen, or they can put it in the chat, and I can read it out. Okay, so we've got a question from P. Um, what were Dharmapala's connections with Burma? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last part of the question. What were Dharmapala's um, connections, connections with, with Burma? I, I still haven't heard them. Sorry. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. And I heard the first part of the sentence. 
what were Dharmapala's connections with? And then I lost you. With, um, with Burma. With Burma. With, ah. Uh, um, uh, he had, he, let's see. He, he, after he, he went to Bodh Gaya in 1890, 90, 91, uh, and um, on his way home, he 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 took he took a steamer from Calcutta to uh, Yangon, and uh, he uh, made a number of. Uh, uh, connections with uh, well-to-do Burmese Buddhists, um, and and that uh, that connection continued. He, he on a later trip stopped in, in in Bangkok, and he got he 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 got um, he he got uh, uh, support from several of the Thai princes. But that support never amounted to anything, and the Thais were really not interested in um, recovering Bodh Gaya the same way the Burmese were. The Burmese had been in, involved since the uh, uh, Minden Min's reign. Uh, they built the they built the uh, a structure at Bodh Gaya either for for workers Burmese workers who went to refurbish the uh, the temple. Uh, tower uh, uh, before Dharmapala got there, uh, and they had a, a continuing interest in in pilgrimage to Bodh Gaya. The Thais had none whatsoever. The Thais um, uh, didn't get it. Uh, that is, they didn't get what Dharmapala wanted them to get, which is the 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 religious benefit of. Uh, Making the arduous trip to the uh, the place of awakening, and um, uh, they they said, "Well, we can we can reflect upon the Buddha and his achievement any any place." Well, and we have temples that are are simulacra of uh, Bodh Gaya. Why should we Why should we go to India? That that uh, that's that's inefficient. Um, the, the Burmese felt differently, and they they became uh, modest supporters of Dharmapala and the, the Mahabodhi society. But um, very quickly, they uh, I would say by the beginning of the 20th century, they decided they wanted to go in their own way, and uh, they became no less enthusiastic about pilgrimage and recovering Bodh Gaya. Uh, but they I, they came to have doubts about Dharmapala and the the size the size of his operation. I think it was part partially, um, n namely, um, uh, in this sense, um, the 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 Japanese Dharmapala visited Japan in the eighteen ninety three. He went back. I think in 1896 and again in 1902, and the, the Japanese uh, uh, had uh, had a, a, a consul in in Calcutta, and they had business interests in Calcutta, uh, and they had uh, Japanese students studying Sanskrit uh, in Calcutta, uh, and so that they. They were able to, by virtue of all of those connections, see what what the Mahabodhi society came to. Um, Dharmapala recruited a whole set of elite um, Bengalis, uh, and they were on the masthead of the organization. But in fact, uh, the organization was Dharmapala. The organization was one man who worked alone. Uh, he had an office, uh, and that was it. Uh, one man in the office uh, trying to pursue the the recovery of Bodh Gaya, and um, the Japanese were not impressed when they came upon uh, 
the, the material circumstances of the Mahabodhi society. And I suspect the Burmese had similar uh, misgivings that um, that that uh, this was ever going to come to anything because uh, it was under resourced and understaffed. And um, uh, Dharmapala kept looking for funds. He he importuned uh, the the Thai royal house for support that they had uh, offered, but support that they had not given, and. Um, uh, that caused a major uh, 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 kerfuffle uh, uh, in British colonial offices because the Thai princes did not want to be importuned by Dharmapala and they went their own way. And then Burmese likewise went their own way. Okay, great. We've got a few more questions about Burma, if that's okay. Um, we've got a question from Rochelle. She says, thank you so much for your talk. And she's wondering, is there a connection between Dharmapala and Lady Sayadaw in Burma? Because we see the same in franchising with the laity. Lady Sayadaw also wrote a small pamphlet called the Sukumara Magadi Pani. And Dharmapala wrote about the Gihivinaya, both based on the Singha Lovada Sutta. But... Um, she's unable to date the lady side or text. Um, that that was that, that was a question with regard to Burma again. Uh, what well, lady side or and Dharmapala? I, I'm not hearing the the first word. Lady side Ah. Um. You know, the, the, I, I think I think the general phenomenon is lay people um, come to play an enhanced role in both Burma and Thailand and uh, Indochina, for that matter, uh, at roughly the same time. Um, um, Lady Saida, uh, um, Dharma, Dharma Paula. Um, uh, doesn't mention him in the diaries. Um, th they they were contemporaries, and they may have met. I, I'll have to look again to see if there's any uh, any evidence, any trace. But it it, it seems to me that um, one of the interesting things about this phenomenon uh, of, of of lay people becoming. Uh, more self-conscious and, and um, uh, acting on an identity in a way they hadn't before is it happens r roughly uh, concurrently in other Theravada societies. It, it's uh, on the one hand, um, I I I am impressed by the Chris Bailey book. Of the making of the modern world, which envisions um, uh, a whole set of changes in the in the structure of societies that um, happen across the world, and they happen um, uh, for uh, for reason for, for for a variety of reasons. Uh, one is simply the diffusion of, of something. Uh, an, an example of that would be Western dress. Uh, at, at the beginning of the, of the 19th century, uh, the men of the world dressed in a variety of different uh, uh, outfits. And by the end of the century, by the First World War, um, the, by and large, <laughs> trousers and, and suit coats had won. Um, and that's that would be diffusion. But the 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 uh, the other part of Bailey's argument uh, is more interesting, which is um, societies react independently to similar historical circumstances, and they do so independent of diffusion. That is, um, uh, religions change in ways that that m may be partially influenced by diffusion, but they also change in ways that. Uh, 
uh, have local actors responding to circumstances are, that are the same in Burma as they are in Sri Lanka. So independent of diffusion, it comes to be, um, there comes to be increasing similarity between the way people uh, practice any of the world religions uh, uh, at the end of the long century that, that uh, Bailey writes about as against the way there was much more uh, human diversity at the beginning of the 19th century. So uh, with, with regards to uh, Lady Sayada, um, I, I, would, I would say you know, the, 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 the rise of meditation, the rise of lay people doing meditation um, uh, might be an example of the of the second kind of growing similarity between the societies of the world, not diffusion, but independent uh, response to similar circumstances. Uh, Dharma Paula, for his, uh, th this is this is my hunch, and uh, it's no more than that. Uh, Dharma Paula thought the key to uh, the religious life was celibacy, um, which he never violated. Uh, he, he is quite clear on that uh, in his Tao. He's always talking. Uh, he's always talking in the diaries about um, Kamachanda and uh, his his uh, sexual longings. Uh, which he which he, he 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 feels loathing about he he uh, he he sees himself undone uh, by that 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 weakness um, and so uh, he said he says he says two things uh, one meditation depends upon celibacy and this is this is more striking it seems to me he he sees he he sees. Um, he sees sasana work. That is, he he he, he sees being an enfranchised layperson as depending upon um, celibacy. Uh, he 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 only had in the course of his life he had two two uh, followers. Um, that is two acolytes, two people who took on the Anagarika role. The first was Wallasinga, Harish Chandra Wallasinga, who I mentioned before with regard to Anuradha Pura. And the second was another uh, was another Wallasinga, not of a different family. His name is Deva Priya. And, and Deva Priya uh, uh, was an orphan that Dharmapala adopted and raised up, educated, and uh, expected to uh, have Devapriya take over the Mahabodhi society after Dharmapala's death, which Devapriya in fact did. Uh, and he he says in a uh, letter to Devapriya, Dharmapala says in a letter to Devapriya, if you want to do sasana work, you've got two choices: you can become a monk or you can remain a brahmacharya. No lay person can do sasana work. So despite the fact that, that that's exactly what happened, Dharmapala's vision was that uh, uh, only men who had renounced the world, either by becoming a monk or by becoming a brahmacharya, were entitled to do work to support the sasana. I say that all by way of contrast. I, I know uh, I know less about the Lady Sayada, but I, uh, it seems to me that his, his notion that lay people can do meditation uh, probably is more generous with regards to the idea of celibacy than Dharmapala was. But you can inform me about that. I, I, I know less here than, than you do. Thank you for that. Um, I think we've got a, a hand raised from Anthony Scott, if he'd like to ask his question. 
Yes, thank you very much, Professor. Um, can you hear me? I can. Okay, and I appreciated the dark parts of the talk very much. Um, uh, just a quick question about uh, Mala, uh, Malala Se Sekera's uh, poly literature, uh, poly literature, and he talks a little bit about the the Kotahina Press and um, their publication of the Melinda Prashnya in yes. I think 1870, 1877 to eighteen seventy eight. So, and he seems to imply that this is what inaugurated or was a very big part of the kind of revive the Buddhist Renaissance as he calls it. And I'm wondering whether Dharmapala was interested in this text at all, but more generally, what kind of text did Dharmapala base his um, his movement on? Ah, uh, um, thank you. That's that's a question that uh, I'll have to reflect on. It's um, the Cotahena Press was started by Migatuwate, the, the same monk I mentioned before. Um, and it um, it became an, uh, another way that the Buddhists fought back. Um, that what I'm sure the same thing happens in Burma and and, and beyond. The Christians, uh, the Christians are gung ho for publishing things. And uh, in order to do so, they have the resources uh, to buy presses and send those presses out to Colombo and Yangon and, and Bangkok and beyond. Um, and uh, but the, the Buddhists don't have a press for a long time. And um, eventually when they do have Dharmapala wants to, to buy his own press and can't afford to do so. So he and Olcott buy a, a used Christian press to start their own business. And um, what, what's interesting in, in that regard is um, both of these religions, Christianity and Buddhism, uh, have, have a real commitment to uh, tractarianism to putting things on paper and publishing them, whether they're pamphlets to be given out on a street corner or whether they're uh, 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 periodicals like the Journal of the Mahabodhi Society or whether they're books. And uh, w w once uh, presses get underway in, in Sri Lanka, once the Buddhists uh, get into the publishing business, there is a proliferation of presses. Uh, I, I think it, uh, by the beginning of the 20th century, there, there's something like 140 different presses <coughs> in Sri Lanka. And many, many of them are, some of them are British, some of them are Christian. Um, a smaller number of them would be Buddhist, but they, they want to publish everything. They, they, um, they, um, they certainly would like to publish the questions of, of King Mahinda, but uh, um, I don't think there, there was any spe special regard for any one publication. Um, I'll, I'll think more about that after, after we finish, because that's an interesting prospect. Um, the, the the Cotahena Press did did publish the Dhammapada, and clearly the, the, the Dhammapada would be a wonderful resource of for uh, propagating the religion. Um, I don't think it was central to uh, the 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 way uh, Dharmapala proceeded, but it was certainly a, a, a teaching tool that he made use of, and uh, uh, as was the Sikalavada Sutta. Uh, he, uh, he 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 regarded those publications as um, an end in themselves, not as a commentary on present conditions. They he didn't regard them as uh, publications that should be that, sh that should produce a commentary where we would take the Dhammapada and then uh, uh, somehow. 
uh, write a commentary that would uh, um, point to some morals apropos of the present moment. It was simply the Dhammapada. And then likewise with the Sikalavada Sutta. Uh, it was uh, it, it was timeless knowledge and uh, sufficient in itself. Thank you for that. Um, we have another question um, from P saying, can you say something about the relationship between laicization in Burma and Sri Lanka? And is there any connection? Uh, I, I think P could educate me on that, on that matter. <laughs> but uh, the, 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 the obvious connection is uh, a, a whole set of, Bur of elite Burmese lay people that uh, Dharmapala interacted with in Yangon. He, um, Dharmapala has, has several uh, mix of, of several visits to Burma. They peter out by uh, in the first decade of the of the twentieth century. Um, the, the most interesting trip is a, a trip that he makes upriver to uh, Mandalay uh, with Olcott and um, and um, the Prince Priest, if you know, uh, Prisdang, the, the Thai aristocrat who uh, uh, flees Bangkok, uh, works as an engineer uh, in uh, Malaya. Uh, for a decade or so, and then is robed in Sri Lanka. Um, Dharmapala, Prisdang, and Olcott go upriver to Mandalay, where they meet the, uh, the, the Burmese ecclesiastical hierarchy, uh, and they, they, they want to recruit the, the, the Burmese prelates to uh, supporting, supporting um, this, it, it, it's, it's Prisdang's invention. It is this, uh, and Blackburn writes about it in Locations of Buddhism. It, uh, she attributes it to Hikadue Sumangala. I would attribute it to the prince priest. Um, it's this notion that since uh, monastic affairs in in Sri Lanka are in disarray. That is the great monastic estates, uh, particularly in Candian areas, are in disarray. That uh, we need a, 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 a good Buddhist king, a righteous Buddhist king to resolve monastic disputes. If, if, if two monks, let's say, have a dispute over an incumbency, which is the chronic pattern in Sri Lanka, Prisdang's model was well, 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 we'll set up um, Chula Longhorn uh, as the uh, the righteous Buddhist king, and he will he'll make decisions for the Burmese because they have their ecclesiastical problems too, and for the Singhalas in Sri Lanka as well as for the Thais. This, this is a wonderful scheme and uh, of, with which the British will have uh, no tolerance uh, and it is uh, it, it quickly disappears. But uh, that gets Dharapala into contact with uh, 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 the Bhikkhu Sangha in Mandalay uh, and elite uh, Burmese in Mandalay and uh, uh, that that adds something to the Mahabodhi society. So I would say the basic the, the basic connection is by way of the Mahabodhi society, which Dharmapala leaves behind, and it it, it becomes a uh, it becomes a way that elite well-to-do Burmese become active in uh, sasana affairs. I don't know how long it survives. I I think. Uh, uh, in fact, it uh, it becomes a, a, I, I, my suspicion is it becomes a ghost operation uh, very quickly, and that uh, the Burmese uh, 
continued to be active in 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 Buddhist affairs, uh, but but not by way of being members of the Mahabodhi Society. Uh, there is there is there comes a point where the Burmese go their own way, and uh, uh, Dharmapala goes his way, and uh, after that, uh, uh, I'm not sure what happens. Okay, great. Um, we've got two questions from Purva. She asks, did Angarika Dhammapala's views on race play a role in this enfranchisement? And could you please make his views on race a bit clear? And second, could you please talk about the connection between Ayothitas, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, um, and Dhammapala? Ayothitas? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not hearing the last. Could you please talk about the connection between Ayothi Tas and Angarika Dhammapala? Um, Dharmapala was prone to all of these late 19th century ideas about Aryanism. Um, you know the the, uh, the role that, that the Aryan idea uh, played. Uh, in, in Indian intellectual life and in Sri Lanka intellectual life, um, uh, he, he, race was on his mind to be sure. Um, uh, but, but if you, if you know the, 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 the paradoxes and the perversities of, uh, of the Aryan idea, um, the, the, the idea comes from Max Muller, the, uh, the, the German British Sanskritist. Um, and it, um, Max Muller first makes the argument about the, uh, the coming of Aryan peoples into India, uh, who then come to dominate uh, North India. Uh, and they, they, uh, Max Muller, uh, Max Muller, um, uh, I think, first envisioned this as as an invasion, as a the physical movement of uh, of uh, of people from the Caucasus into India, and uh, he, 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 I, I think he frames the argument initially in terms of the 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 the, 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 the transfer of genetic material. That is the uh, uh, people bringing the <laughs> coming and and breeding in India and starting an Aryan race in North India, which would in turn uh, um, mean that uh, Bengalis and English people were of the same race. Um, he he backtracks on that and and says, look, there is something extraordinary going on here, but it's not the transfer of genetic material. It is the transfer of Indo-European languages. Uh, the Indo-European languages dominate Europe and they dominate North India. Um, uh, Singhala is Indo-European. Um, Bengali is European, uh, and. Uh, the other languages of, of India, of the languages of South India, Tamil, uh, Telugu, Kannada, Malayalam, those, those are Dravidian languages which work on different principles and have no, uh, there are borrowings, but that ha have no uh, uh, structures in, in common with Indo-European languages. Um, so for, for Dharmapala, the Aryan idea um, plays a, a central role in his, uh, his thinking uh, about uh, the connections between um, uh, his own society and India and, uh, and the metropole, the, 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 the the British colonial system in general, but uh, London in particular as the center of that system. Uh, obviously, 
uh, uh, there, there's very little in common uh, in terms of the, the, the physical appearance of uh, English people, Bengalis and Sri Lankans. But uh, uh, Dharmapala entertains that idea. Uh, I, ha I haven't thought this through, but I, I think as the years go on, as the 20th century unfolds, she becomes less and less enamored of this idea. Um, and um, uh, I, it may be because uh, the idea itself uh, uh, peters out and uh, he simply has the same reaction to it as uh, educated people generally had to it. His, 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 uh, his connection to South India and enfranchising Dalits, uh, that is, uh, uh, converting Dalits to Buddhism is interesting against the background of race. I'm not sure. I mean, he he he, he had many prejudices. Uh, he had he had many ideas about class that are are, are not attractive ideas. Um, he he would talk. He was condescending toward villagers and. Uh, um, and um, the the Betan war of of his life were were Muslims, uh, and not not Hindus. Uh, he, he 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 has very little say about Hinduism. He uh, he certainly uh, has great uh, feeling for the Hindu gods. Um, uh, particularly Vishnu, who is the Sasana Deva, so uh, he has great feeling for Vishnu. Um, but he, he, when when it comes to South India, um, I I think his whole um, they start a they start a Mahabodhi society. They they uh, that is they Olcott and Dharmapala start a Mahabodhi society. They they respond to the interests of. Uh, Yoti Das and uh, and um, they convert a number of people who are Dalits and and uh, he he builds a he builds a, uh, a, a a temple in Chennai. But my 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 sense is his heart is not in it. That uh, this is not uh, not going to be the center of his. Uh, his project, and it should have been. It would have. It would have been a wonderful thing for him to have developed because it was one. He he had absolutely no success in Calcutta converting people. Aryanism aside, he, that that just did not happen. In 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 Chennai, he um, he had people who had reached out to uh, Olcott and to him. And who wanted to be converted, and who uh, uh, who saw their political interests being uh, being uh, served by uh, leaving Hinduism behind and becoming Buddhist. It was it was exactly the same motive as Ambedkar uh, and the the conversion later on of of Dalits in North India to Buddhism. But he. I, I, I'm not. I'm not sure what it was, but I. It. it, it uh, uh, my my darkest suspicions are he had uh, uh, bad feelings about uh, people uh, of low status because uh, uh, he had a whole set of ideas about proper behavior and. Um, he he has it seems to me a much more complicated relationship in Sri Lanka than Sri Lankans recognize. Um, he he regarded villagers as savages, um, and, uh, and and the part of the temperance movement was to wean villagers away from alcohol because the the savagery he suspected had something to do with uh, drinking too much. And I, I, I don't know about the, the Dalits in Chennai, 
but I, my suspicion is he would have the same attitudes about uh, those people as um, he had about villagers in Sri Lanka, that uh, they needed guidance, but um, it wasn't uh, central to his project. He, 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 he says, and others say of him, that he was much more comfortable with Bengalis than he was with uh, Singhalas. Um, and I'm, uh, he doesn't say this, but I suspect that he was more comfortable with English people than he was with Bengalis. So, uh, uh, it, it, that's all about, it seems to be, social class. He, he was, uh, he was a well-to-do Sri Lankan who um, was comfortable in Colombo, but when he got out of Colombo, um, he was in a world he had never known, and he, he wasn't comfortable there in the least. Uh, Obiasekra says someplace that uh, the Heva Vitarna families, his, his natal family, um, were parvenus in Colombo and were uh, ill at ease with the Colombo elite. They, they, it is true, they, they didn't have, uh, they were not socially intimate with other, other elite uh, Sri Lankans. They were Buddhists, and uh, they, uh, Don Carolus, his father, uh, uh, wore a, a sarong. Um, he, he, he was a man of, with village origins, but the family was comfortable in Colombo and highly westernized, English-speaking, uh, and Buddhist. And I, I, I think the key to understanding his relationship with people like Yoti Das would, would simply be um, uh, on a par with what I've just said, namely that uh, uh, he, 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 he responded to the cry for help. He did what he, he, he did what was asked of him, but his heart was in North India. His heart was uh, at Bodh Gaya, and uh, he was more comfortable uh, with people that he uh, uh, felt were of a similar status. Th those people in Bengal were the theosophists, but they weren't Buddhists, they were Hindus, ironically. Uh, and they never, they, they never, they entertained an interest in, in the Buddha uh, as a great Indian, not as uh, the first Buddhist. They they saw uh, the Buddha as someone who had impressed the Western world and could be claimed as a native son of India, uh, but they 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 didn't have a particular interest in converting or uh, studying Buddhism or uh, um, taking it any further than uh, the kind of theosophical interest in in other religions and Buddhism is one that had a heroic founder who uh, had had a, a real presence uh, uh, among well-educated people uh, around the world by way of uh, the light of Asia, the uh, Ed Edward Arnold's uh, epic poem ab about the Buddha and his awakening. Well, that's a very interesting topic. Thanks so much for telling us more about that. It's interesting to hear about the importance of class. Um, we're running out of time at the moment, um, but if it's okay, we can answer one final question. Um, it's from Alexi, and he, th he says, thank you so much for your wonderful lecture. Um, he has a rather speculative question. To what extent um, the enfranchising of laity would have happened in Sri Lanka had there been no Dharmapala? I would like to encourage you to speak about the interplay between the one-man operation and the large-scale Buddhist social process here. Thank you. Uh, th that, that's a wonderful question, and I think I can answer it because I have thought about that. And um, um, I, I, I'm invested in the idea that the Dharmapala that was uh, is not the same as the Dharmapala that 
uh, subsequent generations thought existed. Um, he, in many ways, is overvalued in terms of his importance. Um, he, he, it's not he's it's not that he's inconsequential. He is a hugely important figure, but he's he's important in 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 ways that are inadvertent. Uh, uh, and I would say. Uh, first, that uh, that uh, the enfranchising of lay people was itself inadvertent, uh, by which I mean he had projects. Uh, he 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 formed he formed the Mahabodhi Society to be a lay society. He never wanted it to be led by monks, which, which is interesting. Um, the present president of the Mahabodhi Society is Banagala Upatisa, who uh, uh, is the first monk ever to hold uh, the presidency of that organization. Uh, he, he, wanted, he wanted lay people to pursue the cause, but um, I, I, the, the disparity here is the disparity between uh, uh, who he was and what people have made of him. One, he wasn't he wasn't a fiery nationalist. He was a harsh critic of British rule, but he he, he was not like Gandhi. He did not want he did not want independence for Sri Lanka. What he wanted was the same thing that Annie Besant wanted uh, for India, which was Commonwealth status. He wanted he wanted uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, to be like New Zealand, he, he, he says explicitly, New Zealand, uh, uh, namely uh, self-rule, a lot of self-rule, but membership uh, in, the, in, in a commonwealth of nations and, and a continuing affiliation with, uh, with England, with the United Kingdom. Um, and I, 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 the fiery nationalist uh, idea um, is is simply wrong. It's what what's it, it's what people have made of him. Uh, the Buddhist, if if you've read H. L. Senavaratna's book about the Dharma polite monks, he did not want either. Uh, Senavaratna is much more enthusiastic about. Uh, I'm not sure he's en enthusiastic about either. But if he has to make a choice. He wants uh, the kind of engagement that the Vidyodhya monks have in, in social work and trying to improve the lives of villagers, uh, um, as opposed to the uh, Vidyalankara monks who become politically engaged, who, who join the Communist Party, who, who uh, run, run for political office eventually. Uh, uh, Dharmapala didn't want any of that. He wanted monks to study the Dhamma to do meditation, to take up meditation again. He wanted them to um, join him in the Dharma Dutta effort. He did not, he did not want monks to be politically engaged. And uh, all of those monks look back to Dharmapala as their founding father, the man who told them that they should become politically engaged. He didn't say that. He did not, he, he did not, uh, he did not want uh, he did did not want monks to to vote. He didn't want them to campaign. He didn't want them to. He I, he couldn't have imagined uh, monks serving in in parliament. There they were in the uh, early two thousands. There were eight monks in, uh, uh, elected to the House of Parliament in Colombo, and that would have simply horrified him. So. There's the disparity there uh, with Dharma polite monks. There's the disparity there with nationalism, and there's likewise disparity with um, with regard to what he envisioned for lay people or his importance uh, in franchising lay people. I, uh, I, 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 Alexi, your question is is spot on. Uh, their lay people would have been enfranchised, I suspect, without Dharmapala. It's it, it's. Uh, I mean, keep 
keep in mind what I said about his advice to Dave Apria. You can't you can't do Sassana work. You can't be an enfranchised lay person unless you're celibate. Uh, that, <laughs> that that's not that didn't take that that, that you know that there there are certainly uh, uh, serious Buddhists who uh, practice celibacy, but that is not the nature of lay involvement in in, in Buddhism in general. So uh, I, I think the best answer to your question is simply to say, um, lay people get involved. Lay people would have gotten involved without him. And l l lay people oftentimes hark back to him. Uh, certainly Gombrich and Shinobi Sacra hark back to him as uh, the moment that uh, 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 lay people start to get active. He, he does mark the spot. That is, he is... He is uh, he is timely in in his lifetime, but um, there were all manner of lay people who uh, were uh, enfranchised independent of Dharmapala. Um, D. B. Jayatilaka is a, another Buddhist leader of the time, and he's not uh, he's not a Dharmapalite. He's he has very uh, uh, difficult relationships with Dharmapala. And uh, likewise, uh, uh, the Sadanayakas and W.A. De Silva and the early leaders of uh, the Buddhist revival in Sri Lanka, they, 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 they proceeded onwards uh, without taking very much guidance from Dharmapala. You could say Dharmapala starts the uh, the Mahabodhi Society. There's an earlier society, and it's the Buddhist Theosophical Society. The Buddhist Theosophical Society uh, has a caste basis. It is low country Karava, uh, that is fisher caste people who dominate uh, the, the Buddhist Theosophical Society. The Mahabodhi Society is dominated by low country Goigama, that is farmer caste people. Uh, so for regions of caste, if nothing else, there are lay people who are invested in supporting the sasana and do so independent of Dharmapala. And he's one, one actor among many, but what he, I, I, what he is is... Uh, he's he's a metonym he's uh he's a trope he's a man who wears uh the ochre robes and uh who's out there in public and he he thus acquires a a presence that um he doesn't entirely deserve Thank you for that response. That's very interesting to hear some new perspectives. Um, we've run out of time. Um, so I'll just say there's lots of comments in the chat saying thank you so much for your talk and it's generated lots of discussion. Um, if everybody, when they leave the chat, maybe they could turn their video on to wave and say goodbye so that Steve can see who's been here. Um, and you've got a comment back from Alexi saying, excellent, thank you so much for that response. Um, it's been a great talk and I've definitely learned a lot more about Dharmapala and I'm curious to learn more. Um, next week our talk will be about Thai Buddhism and the problem of single use plastic. So thank you so much Steve for your talk. Um, and maybe everybody can turn the, maybe everybody can turn the camera on and say goodbye. Thank you for your lecture. Thank you. Thank you Steve, thank, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you for your all for your information. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve.